Amalek Hebrew, Amalek modern, Amalek, Tiberian, Amalek, Arabic, Malik Amalek is a nation described in the Hebrew Bible. The name, Amalek, can refer to the nation's founder, a grandson of Esau, his descendants, the Amalekites, or the territories of Amalek which they inhabited. The Hebrew Bible describes the Amalekites as a tribe which lived in ancient Israel and in the land called Moab, in what the Romans called Arabia Petraea Moab and the Desert of Sinai, a region depopulated in the 14th century BC and then occupied by Edomites. According to the Book of Genesis and First Chronicles, Amalek was the son of Eliphaz and the concubine Timnah. Timnah was a Horite and sister of Lotan. Amalek appears in the genealogy of Esau, Genesis chapter 36 verse 12, 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 36, who was the chief of an Edomite tribe, Genesis chapter 36 verse 16. Amalek is described as the chief of Amalek in Genesis chapter 36 verse 16, in which it is surmised that he ruled a clan or territory named after him. In the chant of Balaam at Numbers 24:20, Amalek was called the first of the nations, attesting to high antiquity. Rashi states, "...he came before all of them to make war with Israel." First-century Roman Jewish scholar and historian Flavius Josephus refers to Amalek as a «bastard» Nathos in a derogatory sense. According to the Hebrew Bible, the Amalekites inhabited the Negev. They are commonly considered to be Amalek's descendants through the genealogy of Esau. This is probably based on the association of this tribal group with the steppe region of ancient Israel and the area of Kadesh Genesis chapter 14 verse 7. As a people, the Amalekites were identified as a recurrent enemy of the Israelites. <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology of Amalek In some rabbinical interpretations, Amalek is etymologized as a people am, who lick blood, but most specialists regard the origin to be unknown. <laughs> Amalekites in the Hebrew Bible The Amalekites appear to have lived a nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle along the fringes of southern Canaan's agricultural zone. In Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 to 16, Amalek makes war against Israel in the wilderness. Joshua is tasked by Moses to lead Israel in battle, and Moses watches from a hillside. When his hand is raised, Israel prevails, but when it is lowered, Israel falters. So Moses keeps his hand raised the entire battle, even having assistants hold him up, so that the battle will go to Israel. According to 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1-2, the Amalekites invaded the Negev and Ziklag in the Judean, Philistine border area towards the end of the reign of King Saul, burning Ziklag and taking its citizens away into captivity. The future King David led a successful mission against the Amalekites to recover all that the Amalekites had carried away. In 2 Samuel chapter 1 verses 5 to 10, an Amalekite tells David that he found Saul leaning on his spear after the battle of Gilboa and killed him and removed his crown. The intention behind the removal of the crown was for the Amalekite to present it to David, presumably to earn some kind of reward from him. Most Bible commentators believe that the Amalekites' testimony was a fabrication to entice David into accepting the recovered crown, which the Amalekite assumed would satisfy David, especially in light of his succession against a king who had been an archenemy of David throughout most of his life. David, however, condemns the Amalekite for killing the anointed king, using his own testimony as reference, and orders his men to execute him. Topic. Exegesis of origins. The Bible portrays the Amalekites as descendants of Amalek, a grandson of Esau, who derived their origins from Edom Genesis chapter 36 verses 11 to 12, 15 to 16. In exegesis of Genesis chapter 14 verse 7, the use of Amalekites seems out of place in a passage that concerns the days of Abraham. Rashi explains that the writer was making a reference to the country which was afterwards inhabited by the Amalekites. C. Knight elaborates this concept by making the comparison, Caesar went into France, because Gaul was afterward occupied by the Franks, as Gaul is present day France. Alternatively, during the Islamic Golden Age, certain Arabic writings claimed that the Amalekites existed long before Abraham. Some Muslim historians claimed that the Amalekites who fought Joshua were descendants of the inhabitants of North Africa. Ebn Arabsha purported that Amalek was a descendant of Ham, son of Noah. 
It is, however, possible that the name Amalek may have been given to two different nations. The Arabians mention Imlik, Amalek, or Amaleka among the Aborigines of Arabia, the remains of which were mingled with the descendants of Joktan and Adnan and became Mosterabs or Mokarabis, that is, Arabians mixed with foreigners. By the 19th century, there was strong support by Western theologians for the idea that the nation of Amalek could have flourished before the time of Abraham. Matthew George Easton advocated that the Amalekites were not descendants of Amalek, by taking the literal approach to Genesis chapter 14 verse 7. However, the modern biblical scholar David Friedman uses textual analysis to glean that the use of Amalekite in Genesis chapter 14 verse 7 is actually an anachronism, a chronological inconsistency of in this case, a group of people in a misplaced time. Also in the early 19th century, Richard Watson enumerated several speculative reasons for having a more ancient Amalek than Abraham, in the exegesis of Numbers chapter 24 verse 20 concerning Balaam's utterance. Amalek was the first one of the nations, but his end afterward will be even his perishing." Richard Watson attempts to associate this passage to the first one of the nations that developed post-flood. According to Samuel Cox, the Amalekites were the first in their hostility toward the Israelites. Many nomadic groups from the Arabian desert, apparently including Amalekites, have collectively been termed Arabs. While considerable knowledge about nomadic Arabs have been recovered through archaeological research, no specific artifacts or sites have been linked to Amalek with any certainty. However, it is possible that some of the fortified settlements in the Negev Highlands and even Tel Masos near Beersheba have Amalek connections. Easton claims that the Babylonian inscription suit refers to the Amalekites, as well as the Egyptian term Sidiu. Easton also claims that the Amarna tablets refer to the Amalekites under the general name Kabati, or plunderers. <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish traditions In Judaism, the Amalekites came to represent the archetypal enemy of the Jews. In Jewish folklore the Amalekites are considered to be the symbol of evil. This concept has been used by some Hasidic rabbis particularly the Baal Shem Tov, to represent atheism or the rejection of God. Nur Masala, Eliot Horowitz and Joseph Stern suggest that Amalekites have come to represent an eternally irreconcilable enemy that wants to murder Jews, and that Jews in post-biblical times sometimes associate contemporary enemies with Haman or Amalekites, and that some Jews believe that pre-emptive violence is acceptable against such enemies. Groups identified with Amalek include the Romans, Nazis, Stalinists, and bellicose Iranian leaders such as Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. According to the Midrash, the Amalekites were sorcerers who could transform themselves to resemble animals, in order to avoid capture. Thus it was necessary to destroy the livestock in order to destroy Amalek Rashi. During the Purim festival, the Book of Esther is read in the commemoration of the saving of the Jewish people from Haman considered to be an Amalekite who leads a plot to kill the Jews. On the basis of Exodus chapter 17 verse 14, where the Lord promised to blot out the name of Amalek, it is customary for the audience to make noise and shout whenever Haman is mentioned, in order to desecrate his name. It is customary to recite Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 17 to 18 see below on the Shabbat right before Purim. Topic. Historicity Although Egyptian and Assyrian monumental inscriptions and records of the period survive which list various tribes and peoples of the area, no reference has ever been found to Amalek or the Amalekites. Therefore, the archaeologist and historian Hugo Winkler suggested in 1895 that there were never any such people and the biblical stories concerning them are entirely mythological and without any connection to actual historical events. <laughs> <laughs> Extermination of the Amalekites <laughs> <laughs> Commandments Of the 613 mitzvah commandments followed by Orthodox Jews, three refer to the Amalek, to remember what the Amalekites did to the Israelites, not to forget what the Amalekites did to Israelites, and to destroy the Amalekites utterly. The rabbis derived these from Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 17 to 18, Exodus chapter 17 verse 14 and 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3. Rashi explains the third commandment, 
from man unto woman, from infant unto suckling, from ox unto sheep, so that the name of Amalek not be mentioned even with reference to an animal by saying, This animal belonged to Amalek. As enumerated by Maimonides, the three mitzvah state. Some commentators have discussed the ethical deficiency of the commandment to exterminate all the Amalekites, especially including the command to kill children, and the presumption of collective punishment. Topic. Limitations The commandment to kill Amalekites is not practiced by contemporary Jews, based on the argument that Sennacherib deported and mixed the nations, so it is no longer possible to determine who is an Amalekite. For example, Rabbi Chaim Palaji stated, We can rely on the maxim that in ancient times, Sennacherib confused the lineage of many nations. In addition, many rabbinic authorities ruled that the commandment only applies to a Jewish king or organized community, and cannot be performed by an individual. Maimonides explains that the commandment to destroy the nation of Amalek requires the Jewish people to peacefully request that they accept upon themselves the seven laws of Noah and pay a tax to the Jewish kingdom. Only if they refuse must they be physically killed. A few authorities have ruled that the command never included killing Amalekites. R. Samson Raphael Hirsch said that the command was to destroy the remembrance of Amalek rather than actual Amalekites. The Sfat Emmet said that the command was to fully hate Amalek rather than performing any action, and the Chafetz Chaim said that God would perform the elimination of Amalek and Jews are only commanded to remember what Amalek did to them. Topic see also Agag Battle of Rephidim Eglon King Harem War or Property Judaism and Violence Topic Footnotes Topic References Cox, Samuel 1884. Balaam, An Exposition and a Study. London, K. Paul, Trench, and Company. Easton, Matthew George 1894. Illustrated Bible Dictionary 2nd ed. London, T. Nelson. Feldman, Louis H. 2004. Remember Amalek, Vengeance, Zealotry, and Group Destruction in the Bible According to Philo, Pseudo-Philo, and Josephus. Hebrew Union College Press. ISBN 0878204636. Friedman, David Noel 2000. Eerdmans Dictionary of the Bible David Noel Friedman, Alan C. Myers, Astrid B. Beck ed. W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing. ISBN 9780802824004. Friedman, David Noel. 1833. Penny Cyclopedia, Volumes 1 2. Great Britain. Mills, Watson E., Associate Editor, Roger Bullard. 1997. Mercer Dictionary of the Bible, 3rd and Core. Print. Ed. Macon, Georgia, Mercer University Press. ISBN 9780865543381. Friedman, David Noel 1994. The Punishment of Amalek in Jewish Tradition, Coping with the Moral Problem, Harvard Theological Review Vol. 87, No. 3, p. 323-46. Watson, Richard 1832. A Biblical and Theological Dictionary. London, John Mason. Topic external links Wipe out Amalek, today, Chabad. Org Amalek, based on the teachings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe Remember Amalek, a lesson in divine providence Remembering Amalek Latsnu, popular culture and the disciples of Amalek Antiquities of the Jews, by Josephus Flavius The Jewish Encyclopedia, 1901-6, Amalek A Kabbalistic view of Amalek Amalek, Catholic Encyclopedia article Between Rephidim and Jerusalem, Amalek symbolism in relations between Israelis and Palestinians Contemporary Amalek, Herharim, a blog post by Rabbi Gil student explaining Rav Soloveitchik's controversial view that the Nazis were considered Amalekites.